Joining me today is New Hampshire Executive Counselor Chris Sununu, who's running for the governor. So, Chris, we're talking about taxes. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to sort of focus on the tax policy in general. Um, New Hampshire, people talk about balancing the budget. And one side of it is sort of revenue, the other is expense. Um, do we have an expense or revenue problem in this state? Well, we don't have a revenue problem. I, I don't believe that. A lot of people tell you that. Um, you know, we can manage better. There's no doubt about it. Do, I, do we have an expense problem? Well, we've, we've had balanced budgets in the past, past few years. Um, I don't think, I think the focus really needs to be on not just are we matching our budget. Everyone wants to focus on is it a balanced budget or not. Let's get some leadership that actually focus on what are we spending our money on. You know, the fact that we had $20 million in unspent funds in the developmentally disabled community a couple years ago, and we still had people on the wait list. That's where we need to focus more of our budget efforts. Why did that happen? Why, you know, what were the accounting issues that, that went ahead, and why weren't people getting their services? Someone has to take the initiative and, and dive into that in, at a real level. Medicaid, we talk about Medicaid, Medicaid expansion, what, what that really means. You know, Medicaid expansion has been approved and signed by the governor for the next uh, two or three years here. Um, what does that really mean? How are those di uh, financial dynamics going to play out? What variability and flexibility do we have in the state to use those funds for certain programs? What can we, how much of the funds can we focus on the substance abuse crisis, something I'm very, very passionate about, one of the main reasons I got into this race. How much do we have to focus on, you know, the DD, development to disabled community, bringing in, uh, the elderly component and the nursing homes into long-term care into Medicaid? All these things have to be be addressed at a really um, grassroots level. You can't just float at th what I call 30,000 feet and, and hope for the best. A governor and, and, and a leader really has to get to the nuts and bolts and have the experience and background and leadership of really doing that. That's what I've done uh, at, at Waterville Valley with, with 700 employees I have up there. It's the experience I bring with the executive council managing the contracts and the appointments, knowing the personnel within Concord. And frankly, when it comes to the education issues, and we still have a very big issue with how we fund education in this state, uh, it's what I bring to the table as a dad. As, with kids in schools, living and breathing, the curriculum in schools like every parent does out there, that's that frontline experience we really need when we're talking about budgetary issues. But when we look at the schools, Right, for example, uh, I, I've been on the municipal budget committee for our schools, which, um, and they say, look, there's been a cost shift mm -hmm. uh, from the state to the schools, mm -hmm. uh, just in terms of the, the uh, contribution to retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, so fundamentally, that's a tax increase that got shifted down on the property tax holders uh, when the state, when Concord, shifted it over. Um, and it, you know, look at the testimony from our, our groups about the impact on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. To me, there's a hidden tax in that. Um, it, how do we address that, maintain local control, the right balance there? I mean, there's an intersection of a lot of different issues at uh, one point. So you bring, that, that's a great point, and that really is a statewide issue. And it's not just schools. The, the state downshifted a lot of their costs to municipalities, when, when you're talking about fire, police, schools, everything, because that 30% uh, cost sharing that the state was picking up all, went, all of a sudden went to zero. That was a few. That was two or three, three years it, ago. It was during an economic downturn right. that and New Hampshire, like everybody else, right. felt. I get that, but and now we've seen that now we've, we've there's almost this delay. So what are we seeing now? We're seeing more and more communities say, you know what, we just can't sustain at this level. Let's look, talk about consolidating police. Let's talk about cutting back in our schools. Let's talk about things that really affect our local communities in a negative way. The state has to do a better job of just of not just balancing the budget, um, but finding ways to what I call give a relief valve to the local communities. Does it mean we bring it back to 30%? Probably not right away. Um, but even if we brought it to 5 or 10%, start pulling back. How, how, would, how would the state pay for it? Oh, there's lots of ways. I mean, again, by enticing more business and increasing the, the tax base, uh, you, you lower taxes, bring more businesses in, you know, pass things like right to work and a few other things that I think would really create um, initiatives and, and incentives for businesses to stay and grow here, some long-term energy planning. You, uh, as the economy grows, your tax base is going to grow, and you can provide more programming and, again, provide that relief valve back to the towns. The state made, made long-term commitments to individuals, to towns, um, and, and during a crisis, they had to pull back on that, and, and, and I don't blame them. I don't blame the decisions that were made there. I think they were important decisions to be made, but at the end of the day, as, as you, your economy grows, you can go back to actually fulfilling on those commitments and providing some relief and again that will help maintain local control because as soon as you get towns uh, combining overly combining resources that might not be in the best interest of the individual towns themselves 
you lose that local control. I, I live in a, a town of about 1,700 people in Newfields, and we went through this a couple years ago. We thought about there was a, a, an initiative to possibly combine our police with the, the police department next door. Well, both, you know, great departments, but I know the folks in my police department. My, my friends and family and, and so, neighbors know so them. Th it really that's matters. That's the hidden cost of local control. That's the hidden cost of local control, and, but that's why so much of our taxes go to the local area. You know, I love that model because yep. I know my selectmen and I know the folks in my, in my town, and we can have those discussions and we can have a real, much more viable effect at the local level in terms of how our taxes are used. And I gotta stop you because we're out of time. But when we return, we're gonna continue focusing on a potpourri of issues, so please stay with us.